Not too long ago, we did a video of the cut weapons from Black Ops 2. You guys really seem to enjoy it. So I figured we would make it a series. And Black Ops is my favorite all-time Call of Duty game. I have lots of criticisms to make of the multiplayer, but at the end of the day, I love this game. That being said, it was almost a very different version of it that we got back in 2010, and that's exactly what we're going to go over today. Welcome to the channel, everybody. Jimmy or Chaos, and today... We're going to go over 10 cut Black Ops weapons. We're going to take a deep dive into weapons that were cut from the original game for one reason or another. So you let me know which of these guns you think should have made it to the final build of the game. How different could the game have been if we had gotten any of these? Drop a like, make sure you're subscribed. And at number 10, the MP40. Now it's pretty common knowledge at this point that the MP40 was originally going to appear in Black Ops. But in case you didn't know... The iconic World War II era SMG was going to be part of the Black Ops 1 multiplayer experience in a pretty big way before being cut out of the final build. The MP40 was completely busted in Treyarch's previous COD game World at War, and they were seemingly aware of that because while they were developing Black Ops, they were planning on making the MP40 an actual killstreak power weapon, kind of like the Death Machine or the Grim Reaper. It's unclear how many kills the MP40 would have cost or exactly what its stats would have been, but since it was going to be a kill streak as opposed to a normal weapon, I think it's safe to assume it would have been pretty ridiculous. Now, eventually, Treyarch cut it. They cut it out of the game, likely because they already had a few kill streak power weapons that were way more devastating, but there are some remnants of the MP40 hidden in Black Ops 1's game code, including unused voice lines from the multiplayer announcers telling players when somebody had earned it. Kind of similar to the friendly death machine revving up lines that you guys are very, very familiar with. That would have been interesting. At number nine, Sabretooth. Yeah, not Sabretooth from Marvel, but some zombie love. Black Ops 1 was the first time Treyarch really leaned into their zombies experience and started experimenting with crazy weapons and gameplay mechanics. And we're going to be talking a lot about zombies in this video. So for you zombies fans, get ready. The first one I want to touch on is the Sabretooth. Giant Chainsaw that was originally going to appear in the Zombies mode as a core weapon was even going to have a Pack-a-Punch version. Instead of using ammo like the other zombie weapons, the Sabretooth would use gas, and there was going to be two versions of it, one large and one small, both with their own unique Pack-a-Punch versions. And according to the game files, it was also going to take nearly 10 seconds to reload the gas into one of these things. So if you got caught in the middle of a group of zombies and you ran out of gas, you were basically just going to be screwed. Now, unfortunately, the Sabretooth and all of its Pack-a-Punch versions were deleted during development. We never got to see what it would have been. We didn't get to, we didn't get the Chainsaw Glory. I think this one was a huge miss. At number eight, the Model 1887s. Now, if you know, you know, they were a freak of nature in the original Modern Warfare 2, and Treyarch was going to bring their own version into Black Ops. In fact, if you look around for a little bit during the campaign mission Vorkuta, you can actually find a Model 1887 and you can use it. However, unused game files suggest that the Model 1887 was originally going to be in multiplayer as well, but it was scrapped during development. And if you go in the game code, there are hidden references to a weapon called the MPM-1887. Pretty clear evidence that at one point during development, I mean, uh, the multiplayer version of the campaign's Model 1887s were going to be there. The game icon that connects that to it is just the SPAS-12 which kind of suggests either Treyarch cut the models in favor of the Spaz, or that they never got that far into development for the multiplayer version of the model. And then the Spaz 12 icon, it was just a placeholder that never got filled in. We're never going to know exactly why the models were cut from multiplayer, but given the fact they already had four other shotguns, I like to think Treyarch may have just elected to cut the one that had already been in a COD game before. And yes, the Spaz 12 has also appeared in previous Call of Duty games, but the Black Ops Spaz and the Modern Warfare 2 Spaz were very different. The Model 1887 likely would have been a faithful copy-paste of the version for Modern Warfare 2, and Treyarch probably just wanted to do something original and focus on new weapons. At number 7, the Zombies Kiparis. Now, the Kiparis, Kiparis, whatever you want to call it, SMG was kind of pointless in the Black Ops 1 multiplayer, but it was originally going to appear in Zombies mode. In fact, it was going to be nuts in Zombies, and Treyarch ended up deleting it from the final build of the game in order to condense the weapon sandbox. The Zombies version of the SMG, there's a lot of game files swimming around the game code of Black Ops 1, and there's even a Pack-a-Punch version that would have made it dual-wielded and equipped it with a unique texture. So can you imagine running around Black Ops 1 Zombies with Akimbo Kaparises? That definitely would have been a better way to experience <laughs> this Dogwater SMG. Come on, the multiplayer one is bad. At number 6, the P-38. 
Now, the Walther P-38 handgun is a World War II era weapon. It's appeared in a handful of Call of Duty games, including Treyarch's own COD 3 and World at War. Now, the P-38 never actually showed up in another Treyarch game after 2010, but there are little bits and pieces sprinkled around Black Ops, and it's been confirmed there was originally plans for it to be usable in the campaign, not the multiplayer. Not only is there a pickup icon still hidden in the game files, but there's actually one moment in the campaign where the P-38 is clearly visible, and it's fully modeled. During the mission Project Nova, you can see Steiner holding a P-38 handgun. He keeps it on his side later in the mission as well. There's even ways to hack the game and use the P-38 for yourself. But it was never officially finished or made part of the final experience. And interestingly, if you do the hack to equip the P-38, the stats are just copy-pasted from the World at War version, suggesting that Treyarch didn't get that far into making the weapon fully usable. Might have just been a placeholder, but then again, why would they make it a placeholder if one of the characters in the campaign is openly using it? Now we arrive at the top five. The KS-23. Raise your hand if you remember this thing. Now, unless you were a diehard Black Ops 1 campaign fan, you probably forgot. Pump Action Shotgun showed up a handful of times in missions in Black Ops campaign, but it was absent from both multiplayer and zombies. But did you know this wasn't going to be the case at first? There's a substantial amount of evidence in the game files that suggest the KS-23 was going to be usable outside of the campaign. The multiplayer version is a bit of a question mark, but we know for an absolute fact there was a Zombies version due to there being several references to it hidden in the game files. Now, obviously, it didn't make it to release, and unlike some of the other cut Zombies weapons, the KS-23 did not have a Pack-A-Punch version in the game files, but we do know that Treyarch was at least considering it. At one point during development, the shot was going to be in Zombies, but obviously Treyarch decided against it. At number four, the Shrink Ray. So there is actually kind of a shrink ray in Black Ops 1 Zombies. It's called the 3179. But during the prototyping stages of the game, there was an entirely different weapon that was going to be called the shrink ray. And we even have some concept art of it as a wonder weapon for the map Shangri-La. Now, there were several different weapon models in works, and they would all work off charge instead of ammo. And there was even one version that had a bayonet. You could recharge the shrink ray as part of the weapon by scoring melee kills. It was a cool idea. Ultimately, this early version of the Shrink Ray was scrapped during development in favor of the 3179, but there was actually one other weapon that was in works and was also scrapped, and we're going to talk about it. Now we arrive at number three, the Village Bell. It was another version of the original Shrink Ray concept, and it would have been a similar effect to the weapon we just talked about, but it had a much more consistent visual design. It seemed to have a, a similar function. It would shrink zombies down, make them easy to squish, but it would charge, run out relatively quickly, so you had to be smart when you were using it. Was similar to the OG Shrink Ray, the, vi the Village Bell was scrapped in favor of a weapon that would eventually become known as the 3179. So now you know, there's actually a lot of lore behind the Shangri-La Wonder Weapon. First, it was simply called the Shrink Ray, then it was tweaked and turned into the Village Bell, then all the concepts were smashed together into the 3179. At number two, the Zombies AK-47. You guys know how much I love the Black Ops 1 AK-47 in multiplayer. Did you know Treyarch was working really, really hard on a Zombies version? In fact, out of all the base Black Ops weapons that got cut from Zombies, the AK is probably the one that got the furthest into development. I'm not sure why it got cut, but it almost made it to the finish line. By digging into the game files of Black Ops 1, you can find a Zombies version of the AK-47. It's roughly half finished, and there's even a Pack-A-Punch version called the Red Mist. It would have had an under-barrel flamethrower attachment. Again, I'm not sure why Treyarch cut this out of the final version of the game, because it seems like they put a lot of work into it, but... I guess they decided it just didn't fit to the final vision for the mode. So you let me know now in the comments. Would you have liked to see an AK-47 in Black Ops 1 Zombies? And at number one today, I'm going to go with the M2 Flamethrower. There is a flamethrower attachment in Black Ops multiplayer, but Treyarch originally had much bigger, grander plans. In fact, there was originally a standalone M2 Flamethrower weapon. We know for a fact that it was going to be in at least two of the Zombies maps, those being Five and Kino. Yes, the flamethrower appears in Dead Ops Arcade, but according to several unused voice lines, the M2 flamethrower was also going to show up in a full-fledged weapon. I mean, presumably a power-up on at least two maps, but it seemed like Treyarch cut it due to the fact that it had such a simple design. I mean, the power-ups and the special weapons in Black Ops 1, they all had pretty unique designs. There was, I mean, there were never seen before. So it would have been a little strange for a real-world M2 flamethrower to be there instead of something cooler, I guess. That's not to say I wouldn't have loved a full-fledged flamethrower in Black Ops 1 Zombies, but... I do understand why Treyarch cut it in favor of something more flashy, which ultimately, that was the right call. There's so many of the power-ups and wonder weapons in Black Ops 1, they ended up becoming all-time favorites. 
And there you have it, my friends. How different would the game have been? Each mode? You guys let me know. I'll see you soon.